doing good. Time for another Wednesday night Bible study. My producer, Megan, has decided to turn us around so there's no glare from the little pulpit, so we'll be able to time my, my lesson tonight. Let's just look at a couple of passages real, real quick. I want us to look at one in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 11. If you have your Bibles at home, you can read along with me. Again, this is one of my favorite passages. Normally what you hear from me are things that I have highlighted in, in my Bible, so I share them with you. And this is our Lord speaking here. I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Have you ever considered what a great statement that is? How big that is? I mean, you think about all the people that lived before John the Baptist. All of the heroes of faith that we, we read about in Hebrews. You think about Moses, um, Abraham, David, Joseph. And the list goes on and on and on. Jesus makes such a huge statement here, though, that, you know, forget all those folks for just a moment. He says, John the Baptist, of men, of people born of women, which nares the field a great deal, John the Baptist, nobody's ever been around that's been any greater than him. It is a tremendous thing to say. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Years ago, <clears throat> many years ago, when I was still in high school, <laughs> I won an award. And I'm going, I'm, I'm saying this, for, for a reason, certainly not to brag on myself. Everybody likes to be bragged on in the church, at home. I think it's important that we, 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 we tell our children when they do well, that we tell members of the Lord's church when they do well, when they've exceeded, even if they haven't, it's not necessarily a church matter. Maybe it's something they've done out in the community or at school. Make sure we give everybody a pat on the back every now and then. Everybody likes that. Years ago, back before I started, I, I won an award. It was given by the Wilson County Big Orange Club and it was uh, for football, and um, Coach Ron Welch went with me. I never will forget it. It was over at Sunset Restaurant. It was like a dinner bank. Anyway, most everybody in the room knew each other because it's a small town, small county, especially at that time. This would have been 1978. And um, when it came my time to receive my award, each coach would get up and speak beforehand. And Coach Welch got up there, and I'm sitting there between two other ball players, high school ball players, and I got to hearing him talking and everything, and, and um, wow, you know, I got to looking around, and the two guys that knew me from years ago, he said, he talking about you? He, he really made me sound, I thought, a lot better than, than I was. The point I'm trying to make is this. John the Baptist is bragged on by Jesus. What a huge thing for Jesus to say. If you turn your Bibles back over, Matthew chapter 10, and verse 32, and you can read this, but Jesus makes it very plain that if we'll confess him before men, he'll confess us before his Father that's in heaven. Again, it's that, hey, you know, you acknowledge me. I'm proud of you. I'm going to make sure my Father knows about it. One of the other things that he says here in Matthew chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 11, I tell you the truth of man born of women, there's not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, but here's, here's the thing that, that amazes me about what Jesus says here. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Have you ever thought what a tremendous <laughs> honor and privilege it is for us to be members of the kingdom of heaven, members of the Lord's church? Jesus, this is how Jesus equates it. John the Baptist is the greatest person that's ever lived, born of women, aside from Jesus. But he's the greatest. There's been none any greater. And then he sums up his, his, his statement with, but you know something, y'all? If you're a member of the Lord's church, if you're a member of the kingdom, you're part of God's family, you, even if you're the least in that, you're greater than they are. What a huge statement. I take it for granted a lot. I know some of you do too. You know, the lesson tonight is this. The next time you feel put upon, the next time you feel like you've been slighted, the next time you having a pity party and saying, Lord, woe is me, think about this. If you're a member of God's family, if you're a part of his kingdom, if you're a member of the Lord's church, you're great. Even if you feel like you are the least, Jesus says that you're greater than even John the Baptist and had already said John the Baptist was greater than anybody before him. What a huge, huge thing to think about. We appreciate Jesus Christ. Sometimes we take him for granted. Sometimes we take for granted just our place in, in God's kingdom. One other thing, and then the lesson here is one of the most remarkable things about our Lord, to me, is him, his, his lesson in humility and realizing his place 
and the role he had to play in our salvation, sacrificing himself and emptying himself for God the Father. And then along with that, that example being picked up with the apostles, with Peter, with Paul, and some of the early disciples, first century Christians, they all realized that it, regardless of how they felt about themselves personally, they all had a part to play, whether it was ministry, whether it was serving tables, whether it was preaching the gospel, whether it was being an elder, they all knew there was a part to play. And, and here's the, the most miraculous thing about it all. When it works like it's supposed to, when people all realize that they have a role to play, that God has a place for them in the kingdom, and that even if you are the least, you're still the greatest. If everybody keeps that in mind, my goodness, how well the church works. That's the lesson for tonight. And if you would, bow with me, and um, we'll close. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the kingdom. We thank you for the Lord's church. We thank you for our place in it. Help us to not only find our place, dear Lord, but recognize the importance of us playing our role in individual um, duties that you have for us. We know that each one of us, dear Lord, are here for a reason. Help us, dear Lord, when we find that place to do um, what we can with all our might. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, the example he left for us long ago. We live in a dark world, Lord. We know that if we can let our our light shine as individual Christians, that the light of the church will shine in the world, that we can be an influence um, to counter the darkness. Thank you for Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks again. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart.